a great question, Mark. The reason why people enjoy going to Connections is because of the thematic that we've actually integrated into the program. We call it the Customer Success and Innovation Conference. So the customers come there because of customer success, which is all around us celebrating the great things that they've done over the last year with our technology and our platforms, but also we bring them together to share what is it that made them successful. So we do things, for example, like virtual circles of success, where we get eight to 10 customers around a table, they take a topic and they say, these are the things that didn't work for me, these are the things that did work for me and made me successful. So that whole concept of customer success is ingrained in everything that we do from the virtual circles, the training and, and everything that we celebrate through the conference. And then the other element is innovation. One of the things that I mentioned really clearly on main stage at Connections was that our platform enables the next level of innovation that's never been seen before in the broadband market. But that innovation has to come from customers. While our engineers can sit there and think up cool things, the best thing to do is actually work with our customers, identify opportunities, challenges, new market areas for them, and then ensure that we launch that together. So that's the other reason why they come is because they want to learn about what the innovation is going to be for the next year. Most importantly, what innovations are we doing with our customer partners? Hardware is important. That's something that our customers still you know, leverage from us. But the way we think about hardware is, think of it as the starting point, once you get it in place, to really enable a lot of platform, software, and cloud um, technology in their go-to-market. So to your point on, we're a go-to-market company. One of the things that we've really identified as the huge opportunity ahead is that as broadband service providers move beyond speed, so right now, what do they all sell? They sell connectivity. So buy 100 meg, buy 500 meg, buy a gig from me, right? But the, the problem with that in the long term is that when you have multiple fast broadband service providers in a market, what happens if they're all selling the same thing, they're all selling the same speed, you end up in a price war and a commoditization. So. The Calix partners that we've wor we're working with, they're saying, okay, well, take all this innovation and help me differentiate in my market through managed services. And this is really the focus of what we talked about in Connections 2022, in that we've changed the paradigm, paradigm with our software and cloud platforms, where in the past, the broadband service provider could never help out that end subscriber with an experience. So the, the subscriber, the consumer would generally go to the you know Best Buy or Amazon.com and they'd buy all these over the top services, whether it's you know cameras, um, security, all these different things, they bring it home and then they have to deliver it themselves or you know implement it themselves. And if they're like me, you know, I go with my web cameras, I bring them home from Best Buy, I waste the entire weekend screwing up my installation, and then my wife's really mad at me, and then I, I, I'm like, well, who do I call? I end up on a chat site with a bunch of 14-year-olds who are mocking me because I can't make it work, right? And that's that's a real paradigm. It, that's, that's a paradigm that a lot of us are frustrated by, but we trust our broadband service provider, and the broadband service provider's never really been able to do a good job of delivering that. And that's what we change. We take those over the top services and those DIY services, we integrate them deeply into our platform from a marketing point of view with Marketing Cloud, from a support point of view with Support Cloud. We also announced that we're gonna have a whole installation app for field technicians so that the broadband service provider can then go to their end subscriber and say, hey, I'm not just a retailer trying to sell the same thing you can get at Best Buy. I'm actually gonna come, I'm gonna go in your house, I'm gonna install it i'm going to make sure it's all working and you know what if you have a problem my insights with calic support cloud will help me understand what your problem is get you up and running really quickly and in my case make your family really happy that it's not screwed up anymore right and in that at connections we actually announced our eighth ninth tenth and eleventh managed service that a broadband service provider can use to change that relationship and drive incremental revenue and the services we offered were Smart Town, which is creating a ubiquitous Wi-Fi mesh around the town. The second one is Smart Business, which we're super excited about. There's 28 million small businesses out there. And if we can provide a great service to them, that's a good start and manage Wi-Fi connectivity, you know, cybersecurity and content control. But then there's a whole other world of incremental applications that we will bring through and turn into managed services. So foot traffic, 
um, analysis of uh, inventory, all these different opportunities where, again, broadband service providers have never been able to offer these services to their subscribers in a meaningful way. And that's the paradigm shift that we're, we're enabling with our platforms and platforms. So you're really talking about two things. So the first one is a philosophy conversation. Though we firmly believe that the consumer companies, those ones who sell on Amazon.com and, and are trying to have a direct relationship with the consumer, we, we think of them as a significant threat. Because the reality is they're just using the service provider as a dumb pipe to get to that subscriber to strengthen their relationship. And really, you know, back to the uh, turning a managed service into something of value, what value does the broadband service provider have if the direct relationship is between the consumer company and the end subscriber? None, they're just gonna get cut up, right? So the first thing from a philosophy point of view is no end subscriber will ever know Calis, ever. They'll never know our brown brand, we'll never market to them directly, we'll never sell them directly, our whole focus, as the conference says, is on their success. Broadband service providers helping our customers be successful. But then the second part is the paradigm that we've always lived through is that the only ones who could do these managed services were the big companies. And on stage, I talked about Comcast, right? Comcast has spent a decade, billions of dollars, I don't know how many, but have to be billions of dollars, thousands of developers to build Xfinity. They've had to custom build all this technology and then what happened was, is because they have so many subscribers, all the partners are running to Comcast and saying, hey, can I integrate into that custom platform that you built, right? And what happens to the little guy? Well, the little guy has no part to play because no one's talking to them. They're going after the big companies. They're not paying attention to the little guy because the same work that they do to integrate into Comcast, which takes you know 12 to 24 to 36 months and is a custom integration, they're literally gonna to have to do that for every single broadband service provider. Every integration is a custom integration. So if I'm a small broadband service provider in rural America, and let's say I'm even as big as 30 or 40,000 subscribers, it doesn't scale for a partner to do that one off because they literally have to do it a thousand times. And so that's where we really think the value of the platform comes into place, creating an ecosystem. So now we go to those partners and we say, hey, in the past you only went to the big guys, there's this huge, there's thousands of broadband service providers out there who have tens of millions of subscribers. If you integrate into our platform one time, so that integrates into our marketing cloud to give you behavioral analytics and how to sell, you integrate into support cloud, which is everything that we do with regards to how to support that customer and create that value added service. You integrate into our, our platform, our one cloud to get into the billing and all those different elements. Integrate with us once and we'll make available to you you know, uh, thousands of broadband service providers. And they found, they're flocking to us because they find that a very attractive value proposition because now they can actually partner with the small broadband service provider, give them a great product, and then the broadband service provider isn't just taking it and trying to make a buck, they're actually adding value. And, and so if you think about it, our little smart cameras, yes, I have a sub segment of the population that is going to go and install themselves, but there's a huge percent of the population that like me, who doesn't want to do that. And if my broadband service provider is offering that, it's their brand, it's integrated into Command IQ, which is our mobile app that they put their brand on. It's all it's all supported in, um, by Support Cloud. It becomes something really valuable for the local community, that local consumer. And they say, hey, I absolutely want to get it from my broadband service provider because I trust them. It's just something that, it's a massive paradigm shift because the little guy could never do this before. So that's what we created. But, but you, you, you came off of something that's really important, Mark, where you actually talked about the humanitarian element. What we really find is that our customer, you know, thousands of broadband service providers that, that we work with, most of them are actually very community centric. They really care. They're, you know, they're, they're 42 percent of our customers are actually cooperatives which means they're all about their members, they're all about the community. And then the other ones, a lot of them, it's all about that local brand. How do I partner with the local town? How do I partner with that state and make them wildly successful? So we, we can talk about the humanitarian thing, but it means something that's significant. And you know, just if you're a marketer, well actually having that purpose, not only attracts new employees, attracts customers, it builds a great brand at the local level. It's just good business too, right? So with regards to Smart Town, it basically, 
takes every single wireless router that, you know, they're all Wi-Fi 6 from Calyx. We have the best um, routers in the market, the Gigaspires and the Giga Pros, and it basically turns every single one into a small into a small cell. And on every router, there's a ton of extra capacity. It's just that simple. There's a lot of extra capacity. So when there's extra capacity, wouldn't it be great if I can create a ubiquitous mesh right across the town? I have 14 uh, managed SSIDs that are completely secure and, and um, separated off. And I can offer some basic services like my can, my can, can, my subscriber can roam around town so they can go to the, the park with their dog and have Wi-Fi roaming that's really fast. But the one that you mentioned is the one that was where this all started was that Brad Moline from Allo was the one who came up with this idea and said, called me um, two Julys ago and said, I, I really think we need to go way beyond this concept of community Wi-Fi to how do we partner with the local town? How do we partner with the local educational institutions to completely change the paradigm town by town? And the way that we do that is um, if I have a dedicated wireless network across the town and it ha it's fully secure using Edgerome, which is the standard, it connects into the local grammar school, then to your point, we can go give a, a Chromebook to that, to that underprivileged child and instead of them, because their parents can't afford broadband, having to go to literally the McDonald's or the Starbucks to try and get Wi-Fi to do their homework, what they can do is they can access to this ubiquitous mesh around town. They can use their that free Chromebook. They can do their homework. And more importantly, what, they're logging into the school. They're protected from viruses. They're protected from bad websites and all those different things. And then obviously the use cases just expand and expand because now what you've done is solve the biggest problem that smart towns have which is connectivity. You know, people hate putting SIM cards in everything. It's expensive, connectivity's really questionable. Now what you can do is say, if anything's got Wi-Fi, and whether that's a utility meter, a parking meter, a, um, you know, a, a stoplight, right? Whatever it is, as long as it's got some form of connectivity into that Wi-Fi network, you can now turn it on. And what a great way to partner with the town, saying, hey, don't put a SIM everywhere that can go down and break and all those different things. In fact, just do it this way and we'll give you great connectivity across the town. So we're super excited because it, it's all about partnering with the town. It's not about, you know, how do I create a new revenue stream? It's actually about how do I really create a close relationship with the town and, and change that community. And, and, you know, so yes, thank you to the entire team. We had a lot of partners who were there. We had the most partners we've ever had at the event. You saw. Um, GLDS and a bunch of others who were who were there um, displaying. You also had um, a lot of customers, right? Again, participation about the is about the customers. We had 2,600 attendees. We actually just finished the virtual connections, which is a follow-up where the people couldn't get to the event actually came on. There was over, I think it was over a thousand attendees who also joined in on those virtual sessions. Um, so a huge thanks not only to our team, to our partners, but also to our customers who made an incredible event and. Um, I would just encourage people to go to calyx.com and search for connections and all the contents up there, you can see all the great speakers. I don't know if you had the opportunity to watch Daniel Pink, the author, um, but it was an incredible session. That was one of my, you know, one of the best sessions I've had. You saw all these great leaders from our customers talking about the innovations that they're driving, right? And then on top of that, um, there's the GRED videos, which our customers will use for their advertising, which are fantastic and we're super excited about. Oh,